بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, This is Math 111 uh, First Major Term 231 Let us have a look to the major and solve it uh, together Use the graph of F to find the following values Find the limit what is the limit of f of x when x approaches 0 from the left? So x approaches 0. This is the x-axis. This is x equals to 0. Approach 0 from the left. While x approaching 0 from the left, look to the curve. This is the curve. Where is the curve going? So as x approaches 0 from the left, the curve is going down to negative infinity so the answer is negative infinity is that correct no because uh, when you are here when you are here the when you are here the curve is here but if you go to the left the curve starts here okay so if you are here the curve is here come closer the curve is coming closer to this number. So uh, when x approaches 0 from the left, the curve is approaching 1. So the answer is 1. So you have to go very close to 0, OK? Very close. Now, the next limit, what is the limit when x approaches infinity of the function? x approaches infinity means x is going like this. Well, there is only one graph going here. And you can see that it's approaching y equals to 2. So this line, in fact, is a horizontal asymptote. The curve is not going down to negative infinity. It's approaching uh, 2. What is the limit of f of x when x approaches negative 1? OK, this is the negative 1. So when you come closer to negative 1 from the left, the curve goes to negative infinity. When you come closer to negative 1 from the right, the curve approaches infinity. So from the right, it's infinity. From the left, it's negative infinity. So we say that the limit does not exist. What is the limit of f of x when x approaches 1? Okay, let us approach 1 from the right and from the left because he didn't mention. So if he doesn't mention, you have to approach the number from both sides. So approach 1 from the right. Okay, where is the curve? The curve is here. It's going where? To this number, which is negative 4. So from the right, it's, the limit is negative 4. From the left, approach 1 from the left. So the curve is going like this. And it's go going also to the same number, which is negative 4. So from the right, negative 4. From the left, negative 4. So the limit of f of x when x approaches 1 is negative 4. OK. Uh, second part, B, list all the vertical asymptotes. Where are the vertical asymptotes? Well, we have this line, x equals negative 1. This is a vertical asymptote. Why it's a vertical asymptote? Because the graph approaches uh, the line, this asymptote, approaches the vertical asymptote when x approaches 1, negative 1, from the right and from the left. Okay, When x approaches negative 1, the graph goes to infinity. So it's, it is approaching this asymptote, OK? So uh, we don't have any other line in, in which the, the curve approaches this line, vertical line. So the only vertical asymptote is x equals to negative 1. Uh, you can remember also that the definition of the vertical asymptote, if you find when x goes to negative 1, the number from the right or from the left, if you find that the limit is infinity or negative infinity, when we come from the right, it's infinity. So this proves that 
x equals to negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. This is the definition of the vertical asymptote. If the limit goes to infinity or negative infinity from the right or from the left, then the line x equals to this number would be a vertical asymptote. So this is the only vertical asymptote. For the horizontal asymptotes, you need to find the limits of the function when x goes to infinity and when x goes to negative infinity. So when x goes to infinity, we, we found the limit here. When x goes to infinity, the function is going to 2, approaching 2. So this proves that the line y equals to 2 is a horizontal asymptote. So you take the limit when x approaches infinity or negative infinity. If you take the limit when x approaches negative infinity of f of x. Now, when x goes to negative infinity, the curve is going where is approaching this line, which is 0. So uh, when x approaches negative infinity, the curve approaches 0. So the line y equals to 0, this line, the x-axis, is also a horizontal asymptote. So this graph has two horizontal asymptotes. List all the points where the function is not differentiable. Well, the function is not differentiable if it is not continuous. So it is not continuous at negative one. So at, I say at x equals negative one, the function is not continuous, so it's not differentiable. Also at zero, the function is not continuous, so it's not differentiable. Also at one, the function is not continuous at one. There is a gap here, okay? The function is not continuous at negative one, zero, and one. Well, at two, see the curve is doing like this. The tangent line at two is vertical. So I have a vertical tangent line at two. So also the function is not differentiable at two because the tangent line is vertical. If you draw a tangent line at 2, it would be uh, vertical. So the slope of the vertical line is undefined. So derivative is undefined. While here, I have a corner. So I cannot draw a tangent line. There are plenty of tangent lines. Okay, There is not unique tangent line here. Uh, so at a corner, also the function is not differentiable. So at three, also the function is not differentiable. So at two and three, the function is continuous, but it's not differentiable because of vertical tangent and corner. Find the inverse function. To find the inverse function, first step, there are certain steps. First step, I replace f of x by y. And then I solve this equation for x. To solve the equation for x, I have to get rid of the third root. And we do that by raising both sides of the equation to the power 3. So I'll get y3, y to the power 3 equals. Now, if you raise cube root to the power 3, they cancel each other, and you have 3x minus 1. Remember, we need to solve this equation for x, so I'll take 1 to the other side. This is negative 1. If you take it to the other side, it would be positive 1. Now, to solve the equation for x, divide by 3. So x would be y to the power 3 plus 1 divided by 3. Now, the next step is to interchange x and y. So it would be y equals x cubed plus 1 over 3. The last step is to replace y by f inverse of x. Just memorize the steps, and uh, you find f inverse. Find the limit of f of x. Well, f of x is between two functions. So I find the limit of this function, which is to the left x minus 5 over 3x minus 15 as x approaches 5. If I replace x by 5, I'll have 0 over 0. 
When you have zero over zero, you think of factoring or multiplying by the conjugate. But there is no root here, so I'll factor. X minus five is irreducible. It's factored already. Nothing there irreducible. Three X minus 15, I can take three as a common factor. So I'll have X minus five. If you take three as a common factor, you get X minus five. Now you can cancel X minus five with X minus five. And the limit would be one up and three down. So it would be one over three. So the limit of this function is one over three when X approaches five. Let me find the limit of the function to the right. So limit one over three plus len six minus X. when x approaches 5. Well, this is 1 over 3 plus 6 minus 5 is 1, len 1. Well, len 1 is 0. You can check by the calculator. So we found that the limit of this function is 1 over 3. The limit of this function is 1 over 3. Squeeze theorem. Squeeze theorem says that if this limit is 1 over 3, if they both limits are the same, then the limit of f of x, the function in the middle between them, when x approaches 5, will be also 1 over 3. So this is how to solve the question. You use the squeeze theorem. You find the limit of this one, the limit of this one, they must be equal. If they are equal, then squeeze theorem says that the limit of f of x in the middle is equal to the same number which is 1 over 3. Use the table to estimate the limit. Well, x is approaching 2 from the right. So this is 2, this is 3, this is 1. If you approach 2 from the right, then you need to replace x by numbers to the right of 2, greater than 2. So let us make a table. Let us choose x, for example, 2.1. Okay. 2.1, this is close to 2 from the right. Replace x by 2.1. So find len 2.1 minus len 2 over 2.1 minus 2. Use the calculator and just write the answer. If you use the calculator, the answer is, uh, let me round to four decimal places, 0.4879. Okay, now, Go closer to 2. So I'll choose 2.01. Now I'm going closer to 2. And replace, use the calculator to replace x by 2.01. Len 2.01 minus len 2 over 2.01 minus 2. And I'll choose four decimal places. I'll get 0.49875. So I'll write it 8. Okay. Let us take another number, approach, come closer, more closer to 2, so 2.001. Uh, replace x by this number, okay? Put it in the calculator. The answer is 0.49987, so I'll take it 9 because 87. Well, look here to y. Is y approaching any number? Yeah, it's becoming 4999, so it's approaching 0.5 actually. So I can say that the limit of len x minus len 2 over x minus 2 when x approaches 2 from the right is 0.5. If he asks from the left, you choose numbers from the left of 2. So you choose 1.9, then you put 1.99, then you put 1.999 three times, and you will find that y is approaching uh, another uh, a number. It could be the same number or it could be different. Please check. Find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of this function. Well, again, let us find the vertical asymptote first. Vertical asymptote, just find the zeros of the denominator. 2x minus 4 equals to 0. So take 4 to the other side, divide by 2, so x is 2 is the vertical asymptote. So the equation of the vertical asymptote, x equals to 2. And you can check, you can find the limit when x approaches 2 from the right, 
and you will find that the limit would be positive or negative infinity, okay? Uh, so that's the vertical asymptotes. Well, for the horizontal asymptote, I have to find the limit of the function when x approaches positive or negative infinity. Let us start with positive infinity. Well, usually to find the limit when x approaches infinity, we choose the highest power. So the highest power in the numerator is x squared plus three, which is high x squared, of course, uh, when x goes to infinity is much, much, much higher than three. So we deal with x squared and we forget about the three. Also here, 2x minus 4, 2x, when x goes to infinity, it will approach infinity. And minus 4 is just minus 4. So I'll deal with 2x and forget about negative 4. This is how we find the limit when x approaches infinity. Now, what is the square root of x square? Well, this is important to remember. Square root of x square is absolute value of x. It is not x. So square root of x squared is absolute value of x over 2x. Uh, it is not x because x could be positive or negative because it's uh, squared. So if x is negative, I need the square root to be positive. So I have to use the square root. I have to use the absolute value. So please pay attention to this fact. Now, absolute value of x could be x if x is positive, and it could be negative x if x is negative. Well, x is approaching infinity here. So x is a positive number. So I can replace absolute value of x by x because x is positive. This is the definition of the absolute value. Now x cancels with x and the limit would be half. So I have a horizontal asymptote, y equals half. Let us find the limit when x approaches negative infinity. The first two steps are similar. So I'll have limit of absolute value of x over 2x. This one would be the same. This one would be the same because square root of x squared is absolute value of x. But now, x goes to negative infinity. So x is a negative number. So absolute value of x will not be x. It would be negative x. Again, x cancels with x, but here I have negative one up. So the limit is negative two. So I have two horizontal asymptotes, y equals two half and y equals two negative half. This is an important question and all depends on square roots of x squared, absolute value of x, and the definition of absolute value of x. Absolute value of x could be x if x is positive. It could be negative x if x is negative. So pay attention to these two points when you have square root of x squared in the question. Square root of x squared in the question, you will need these two facts. Use the intermediate value theorem. What is the intermediate value theorem? Intermediate value theorem says that if you have a continuous function, curve, a continuous curve, and you have A here and B here, and you find F of A, and you find that F of A is negative, and F of B, you found that F of B is positive, or this is positive and this is negative. So they are opposite in sign. The theorem says that then there is a C, this C, such that F of C equals zero. So in fact, there is a root or there is a zero of the function between A and B. This is what the intermediate value theorem says. So how to show that there is at least one root of this equation on this interval? I have first to define a function. So the function here would be, I'll take everything to this side. So it's len X plus three X minus four. This is my function. And it's defined on the interval one to two. Well, the function is continuous from one to two. F is continuous. Why? Because 
This is a polynomial, and this is len x, the domain of len x from uh, 0 to infinity. x should be greater than 0. Well, x is greater than 0, so f is continuous because, and you can write that uh, f is continuous because 1, 2, okay, is subset of the domain of the function. You can say that, or you just say f is continuous on 1 and 2. F has to be continuous to, to use the intermediate value theorem. And now you find f of a. What is a? 1. So find f of 1. So len 1, that's 0, plus 3 minus 4. So f of 1 is negative 1. That's a negative number. What is f of 2? Len 2 plus 6 minus 4. That's a positive number. 6 minus 4 is 2, and len 2 is positive. So that's a positive number. So you say by intermediate value theorem, there is a C in the interval 1 to 2 such that f of C equals 0. So this proves that there is a root, which is C. There is a root of the function <clears throat> between 1 and 2. Use the definition to find the derivative. This is a piecewise function. Well, at 1. So we need to check whether this function has a derivative at 1 or not. Well, the function has to be continuous first. So you need to check whether the function is continuous at 1 or not. So find the limit of f of x when x approaches 1 from the right. From the right, I replace x. I replace f of x by 3x squared plus 5. And I replace x by 1. So 3 plus 5, that's 8. So this is the limit from the right. The limit of f of x when x approaches 1 from the left, I will replace f of x by 6x plus 2, because x is less than 1 here. And replacing x by 1, 6 plus 2 is also 8. So this means that the limit of f of x when x approaches 1 is 8, which is equal to f of 1. So f is continuous at 1. If you find that f is not continuous, then you can say immediately that the derivative does not exist. Let us find the derivative. So let us find f prime of x, not of x. I need to find f prime at 1, only at 1. But I have to find f prime from the right and from the left. So let me start from the left. Well, the definition of f prime, it is the limit when h approaches 0, f of x plus h, but x here is 1, minus f of x, but x is 1, over h. What is f of 1 plus h? I have two definitions. I am approaching, uh, I am finding the derivative from the left of 1. Okay. So I use this definition, 6x plus 2, to the left of 1. So f of 1 plus h would be 6 times 1 plus h plus 2. I replaced x by 1 plus h. Minus f of 1. Well, f of 1 is 3 plus 5 is 8. We found f of 1 here, it's 8. Over h. I'll have 6 plus six h two minus eight is negative six over h six cancels with six and h cancels with h and the limit would be six so the derivative of this function at one from the left of one is six let us find the derivative at one from the right same definition but i replace f one plus h by this function now because I'm coming from the right one. So it would be 3 times, I replace x by 1 plus h squared plus 5 
minus f of 1, which is 8, over h. I need to expand this. So it's 1 plus 2h plus h squared. 1 plus h squared is 1 plus 2h plus h squared. And 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Now 3 times 1 is 3 plus 6h, 3 times h squared, 3h squared minus 3 over h. Cancel 3 with 3. Take h as a common factor. So I have 6 plus 3h over h. Cancel h, h with h. Replace h by 0. 6 plus 0 would be 6. So the derivative from the right is equal to the derivative from the left is 6. So derivative of the function at 1 is equal to 6. Use transformations to graph this function. There is an absolute value. You can forget now about the absolute value and think about x squared minus 1. What is the standard function to start with? Okay, the original function is x squared. So what is the graph of y equals x squared? It's a parabola like this. Okay. Use transformations, he says. Okay, what about this minus 1? This will take the graph one unit down. So the graph would be like this. Now, what about the absolute value? The absolute value means y would be positive. So it will make y positive. So if you look to the graph, y is positive here and here. But in this region, y is negative. So if you put the negative in the absolute value, it will make it positive. So what would happen to the graph? It will go up. So I have this part and this part as it is, but this part will be like this. It will go up. So this would be the graph of f of x. Uh, and this was the last question. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening and solving this uh, exam. Thank you very much. See you next video.